Good morning, students. How are you all? Great. I'm Kushpu Patel from Saraswati Group of Education, and today I'm conducting this session for the science subject. As you all know that we have started with lesson number three, which is related to fiber and fabric. We wear clothes for different purpose on different occasion in different season. We are also using clothes for different purpose like making curtains, bed sheets, upholstery, carpets, in many more thing. Right? We know that we get fiber from the natural sources like a plant and animal. So till now, we have completed the two plant fiber that is cotton and jute. Now today we are moving further. We are going to start with a new topic. So before I start the topic, I hope you all are sitting with your textbook and of course a pencil, right? So in your textbook, please open page number thirty-seven. That is our today's topic. As I told you that we have completed the fibers which we get from the plant. Now we are moving towards to the next topic that is animal fiber. There are certain animals living on the earth whose body are having certain hairs, and that hairs can be woven into the fibers, and from that fiber we can make the different type of clothes. Animal fiber, fiber, you know, a long thread, right? Now the fiber or the raw material for making the fiber, which we get from the animal, that is considered as animal fiber. There are different animals who is giving the raw material for making fiber. But as per your grade, we have to understand only two type of the animal fiber. The first one is which we mainly use in the winter season for keeping ourselves warm. That is wool, right? We wear woolen clothes, woolen jackets, scarves, muffler, cap, and many more things like a monkey cap also. Right. So where do we get wool from? That we need to understand here. Right. So see in your textbook as I have told you, page number thirty-seven. Animal fibers. Fibers that are obtained from animals are known as animal fibers. Underline this. This is the definition of animal fiber. Right. The fiber which we get from the animal is known as animal fiber. Wool and silk are common example of animal fibers. As I have told you, that many animals are giving us raw material for the fiber, for making clothes, or for making fabric. But as per your grade, we just have to cover the two things, or you can say two animals, which is giving fiber. The first one is wool. We know when I say wool. The first animal will come into your mind that is sheep. A very thick hair present on the body of a sheep, which can be taken out and can be utilized for making fabric. Right. So that whole process and a few property of a wool we will cover over here. So see the first topic that is wool. What are the main animals? Which are the animals which are giving us this fiber? See, wool is mainly obtained from the fleece of the animal. Now, about the fleece, we have understood. Fleece means nothing but the hairs present on the animal's body. So that is known as what? It is known as fleece, right? Wool is mainly obtained from the flesh of sheep or other hairy animals such as yak, camel, Kashmiri goat, and angora rabbit. Sheep we all have seen when you travel on highway, when you travel to village area, you will see that uh, uh, shepherds are taking their sheep for grazing. If you will observe the body of a sheep. You can see the way we are having hairs on our body. Same way they also have a hairs on their body, but their hairs are a bit thick. It is thicker than our hairs, right? So that is useful in making clothes. So not only sheep, but some other animals like yak, angora rabbit, Kashmiri goat, and one more that is camel can give the fleece. 
and their fleece is helpful in making clothes. Right? The ship is sheared to obtain the fleece. Now, what is the meaning of sheared? Sheared means removal of a hair from the body. Right? You may have seen that humans are also removing hair from their body. Right? Same way, the hair which is present on these animals can be removed. And that procedure or that process is known as shearing process. It is known as what? It is known as shearing process. Shearing means removal of a hair. With the help of one thing. What is that thing? Removal of a hair. With the help of clippers. Not slippers or not flippers. But with the help of clippers. Right? It works like a clip. That clips to be attached with the hair of the animal. And then it is sheared. You have, maybe, you have seen it in the movie called Three Idiots, right? Where they are shearing it in the last scene, right? Okay, so that removal of a hair is what? It is a one process that is known as shearing a process, right? So, if we want to make a clothes, we need to remove this hair, right? So, underline this, shearing is the process of Removing the hair from ship. That means from ship's body, we are removing the hair. That is shearing the process. It is done with special instrument called clippers. It is like a clip. The clips are attached and then it is sheared. So that the skin of the ship will not hurt. Or ship will not get any injury, not any kind of a damage. So clippers are used. Okay. After shearing, bells of wools, that means when you shear the body of a ship, you will be having a bulk of wool. But it will be dirty. It will be in a like a bell's form. It has to be cleaned and combed. So that bells, like guchudu che, is sidhu thai jasit. And we can have the fine fibers. Right? So see, after shearing, bells of wool are packed. It is collected at one place, then it is packed. And these bells are then sent to meals where they are cleaned and combed by a machine. The way we have seen in the cotton balls, that when it is hand picked, when it is collected, it has to be cleaned first. And then from the bells, because Gujra Uta Usmin, so it has to be combed. So we can have the fine straight thread. So here also in the wool, after the collection of a wool, it has to be cleaned and it has to be combed. But this combing and cleaning process is done by machine. Right? It cannot be done by the human. It can be done only by machine. Okay? These cleaned wool is then spun that means beta reche into, sorry, spun to form fibers. Now the threads are ready. So it has to get spun. Right? So spun kiya jata hai and then we can have the proper fiber. And from that fiber, we can make the different clothes of a woolen. The fibers are woven or kneaded to make clothes. Either it can be done with the machine, weaving machine, or it can be done with the hand, with the two needles. Kneading. You might have seen, maybe in a reality, or maybe in some TV serial, that grandparents, your grandmother especially, are kneading the sweaters with the help of the two needles. So that sweater is of what? It is of woolen. Right? So this fiber are then woven and kneaded to make the fabric. Right? That means the clothes are now ready. 
What are the main properties of the wool? See, wool is flexible, right? Uh, it is very flexible just because it is from the animal's body. So it, you can give any type of a shape, any type of a size, like the other material. So wool is very flexible. The next one, it absorbs moisture and dirt. Every day if you are wearing a sweater, right, in a winter season, so you will feel that it is actually not getting dirty like the normal clothes. वो जल्दी खराब नहीं हो जाता है, गंदा नहीं हो जाता है. Why? Because it has the capacity to absorb, मतलब खींच लेना, absorb कर लेना, dirt and moisture. So it gets less dirty. It is flame resistant. Flame means what? Fire. आग. Resistant means वो आग जल्दी से नहीं पकड़ता है. Right? Suppose if there is a fire in the house, you have seen in the movie that characters are covering their body with the blankets. Right? So blankets are of what? It is of a wool. Because wool does not catch fire easy. So we can say it is a flame resistant. Okay. So these are the few properties of wool. Very easy to understand. Right? And very easy to remember. Now, why do we wear woolen clothes in a winter season only? We know that in a winter season the outer atmosphere temperature is too much cold. And we are covering our body with the woolen clothes. Why it is so? The reason is given here in the textbook. See, the wool fibers trap air in between them. That means they capture the air. Between the two woolen fibers there is a small hole through which air is been trapped. Air under chali jati hai. Then what will happen? Air is a bad conductor of heat. Bad conductor of heat means it does not pass any heat. It does not pass any heat from one place to another place. So we can say that air is a bad conductor of heat. So if the air is trapped inside the wool and we are wearing the woolen clothes, we will not feel cold because air will not pass the heat of your body outside. अपने शरीर की जो गर्मी है वो बाहर नहीं जाने देगा तो वी फील वार्म वेन वी आर वेरी वुल एंड क्लोज राइट दिस प्रिवेंट्स फ्लो ऑफ हिट फ्रॉम अवर बॉडी टू द कोल्ड सराउंडिंग दैट मीन्स द बॉडी इज हिट विल नॉट गो आउट साइड सो वी विल फील वार्म दस वुल एंड क्लोथ कीप अवर बॉडी वार्म इन विंटर वुल इज कॉमनली यूज फॉर मेकिंग क्लोथ Bedding, upholstery, and carpets. Right? The reason I told you that why we are wearing woolen clothes in the winter season because it keeps our body warm. It traps the air in between, and the air will not allow the body's heat to go out. शरीर नहीं गर्मी ने बाहर नहीं जावा. So we feel warm. So we are wearing woolen clothes. And woolen clothes are not only for the use of a winter season clothes. But other than that, we can make carpet, bed sheets, upholstery, right? And many more things from it. So this was about wool. I hope you all have understood till here. Right? Now, we are going to see a one short video related to this. Let's start. Animal Fibers what protects you during the cold winter months? Sweaters, jackets, coats, scarves, caps, shawls and socks protect us from cold during the winter months. Do you know what these cozy clothes are made of? They are made of wool. Wool is obtained from the fleece of animals like sheep, goats, camels, yaks and rabbits. Most of the wool available in the market comes from the fleece of sheep. The thick coat of hair on the body of a sheep is called fleece. The process of removing fleece is called shearing. Shearing does not hurt the sheep. 
So, as we have completed watching this video, we are going to start with the next one. The next fiber which we get from the animal, which is silk one. Right? Silk is the next fiber which we get from the animal. But from which animal? We get it from the small worms. No, small, I can say a very small worms. The name of that worm is a silk worm. Right? Silk is considered to be a very rich fabric. In an ancient time, it was believed that those who are rich can only wear silk because it was very costly at that time. Right? It was originated in uh, China and then uh, that it has been passed to India and Middle East and many more countries. Right? So, silk is the another fabric or you can say another uh, fiber which we get from the animal. The name of the animal which is giving us a silk is silk worm. See here. Silk is produced from the cocoons. Underline this word. Cocoons. Cocoons, cocoons ni bola hai. It is cocoons. Of the silk worm. It's a small eggs or you can say a silk worm is having a habit to release the liquid from its mouth. Which is known as a saliva. And that liquid will be there around their body. Utana sharini ajubaju liquid vitare chhe. And with the help of a sunlight, it will shine, it will become harder. And that cocoons are then boiled in a water. And after the boiling procedure, we get the fine fibers of silk. This is the simple procedure. Right? See. A silkworm feed on mulberry leaves and secrete and unbroken fiber cocoons around itself. Now what is mulberry? Mulberry is a one fruit, a berry, just a blueberry, hota hai, cranberry, hota hai. Vaise mulberry, mulberry that is shetu, Gujarati. Ma. Right? So mulberry leaves, in a jhadwana, leaves upar silkworm vadhare reta hoi cha. And they release a one secrete means release karna, muse nikal. So they are releasing this liquid from their mouth. And that liquid will be around their body. Right? Apne body ke aas paas hi wo spun karte, vitari rakhe cha. Okay. As the silkworm enters the pupa stage of its life cycle, it completely enclose itself in a cocoon made of a silk. Silk worm means a worm. You can see in the textbook the picture is given. From that worm, they will enter to pupa stage. That means their body will develop. So that they that developing stage will be there inside the cocoons. Worms mati pupa ma jaiche, ekyan jaiche, toke cocoons ni andar jaiche. Right? This cocoon is boiled and unwound to form the fiber. I told you that it becomes hardened. It becomes, the cocoons will become hardened due to the sunlight. And after the pupa stage, the worm's life is over. Right? So that cocoons are then boiled in a hot water, in a warm water. So that will become soft. Because hard ho chukya hote, to usko soft karne ke liye, they are boiling it in a water. And after they get softened, the fine fibers of a silk will be removed, will be taken up and then it will be spun to make a fiber. The fiber is then spun to form silk yarn. Silk na fibers bani The rearing of a silk worm for the production of a silk is called sherry culture. This you need to remember and you have to underline. What is the meaning of a sherry culture? Rearing of silk worm. Rearing of a silk worm means Usko palna, posna, bada karna. Right? Rearing of silk worm. In science, that word for this rearing of a silk worm that is sherry culture. 
right many of the farmers who are having uh, too much of a mulberry trees in their farm they allow that silk worm to grow over there so that they can have the silk fiber they can make the silk fiber right the silk fiber is made into fabrics such as sateen velvet chiffon crepe and brocade that means not only silk but many more things can be also made from the silk fiber like satin silk brocade crepe silk chiffon right the first silk was developed around 5000 to 8000 years ago in china i told you that original silk was actually originated in china that was also a long back around 5 to 8000 years back then that method of making a silk fabric has been passed to many countries including india right from china it came to india europe africa and middle east the trade route between these countries was known as silk route trade route means business route from china all these countries were importing silk matlab wahan se mangwate the to wo pura ek route ek path ek rasta ban jata tha so that route was considered as a silk route because wo silk ki hera feri hoti thi right okay so i hope you have understood till here moving further to the properties of silk right the first one silk is the strongest natural fiber although it is made from the saliva of a silk worm it is considered as one of the strongest natural fiber second one is it dries quickly cotton clothes or woolen clothes may take time to get dry but silk clothes will dry very quickly it does not shrink that means when you wash one time two time or more than that time the size of the clothes will remain as it is it will not shrink like a cotton cotton apne kahe ke chadi jaye che nano thai jaye che silk no it is cool in summer and warm in winters right so this is the best property of a silk that if you are wearing a silk clothes in a summer season it will give you coolness it will give you that cold feeling not too much but yes a bit and if you are wearing it in a winter season it will give you warm feeling right so you can wear this silk clothes in both the seasons silk thread are very fine soft and light in a way they are very shiny they are very light in a way when you are wearing a silk clothes you will feel that your body is not having too much weight of the clothes right so their fiber is very much light in a way it retains its shape drapes well has a natural shine and can be easily dyed dyed means we can give any color to silk fiber easily drap means we can wear it easily and the shape will remain as it is as it does not get shrink after repeated wash right so these were the few properties of silk i hope you have understood the two topics which we have covered today that is wool and silk so with this i am ending my today's session we are going to meet in the next session but as you all know whatever the topic we have covered today read it again from your textbook and for any query go through this video again we are going to meet next time with a new topic till that time i am taking your leave bye bye